Good afternoon and welcome to Grain TV. It's February 19th, 2013. To my left is Logan Burgess and I'm Brock Shimbino. Let's turn over to Fire Tip Trading Software to see where the grains ended up in Chicago. Corn was down three and a half cents, soybeans up 46 and a quarter, wheat down 10 and a quarter in Chicago, and Kansas City was off eight and three quarters cents as well. You know, we had a sharp uh, rally in the beginning of the night session for soybeans, Logan. Mm -hmm. Yeah, soybeans actually gapped higher to start the night session last night. It seems like fundamentally, uh, some people were looking for a, some good precipitation down in South America here over this weekend. That really did not materialize, so that was kind of uh, pushing things from the get-go. Addition to that, we did have the Chinese taking their Lunar New Year uh, celebration last year, or last week, excuse me, so they were out of the export market. And we saw them return today with 120,000 metric tons sold here for the current marketing year. So certainly not a huge sale there, certainly not a sale that's going to push this market up 46 cents, but certainly uh, some anticipation in the market that the Chinese may be back uh, in this market in a big way. You know, I think fundamentals did get this market started on a rally, uh, the soybean market in particular. Um, and if we turn our attention to the technicals, let's take a look at the March daily soybean contract here. You can see that once we got up to that 200-day uh, moving average, which is the red line coming in, we really accelerated our buying and actually went up as high as 1474 in the day session. Um, you know, I think the next area that we could test is that 1480 area, uh, which is that trend line from the top, the highs that we hit in September and the highs that we hit uh, earlier this month. If we retest that, I think we would probably see some resistance there mm -hmm. as uh, some of the buying interest might uh, might dry up as we've seen a large rally today. Yeah, you know, if we jump in corn here real quick, we're taking a look at a March five minute chart here on corn. And as you can see, here's the open of last night's night session. We did gap higher there as well, kind of traded higher. We picked up some steam. We actually had a high uh, print around 703 for corn. But as you can see here from this trend line, once we broke down below this, it seemed like corn uh, really found some weakness there. It certainly didn't help that we had wheat trading lower today uh, on some fundamentals, on some anticipation of, of rain across the southern plains. But you know, looking back here at corn, I think that $7 area is going to remain uh, very important to keep an eye on. Certainly, it doesn't seem like right now this corn market has a lot of strength. I think if we keep to slide or keep sliding lower, certainly the next uh, stopping point is going to be 680. That was the lows that we had printed uh, here back several months ago. Uh, but certainly not a lot of fundamentals in this corn market to really push it either way uh, here today. One thing, Brock, that we did have in terms of fundamentals was export inspections reported this morning. Can you kind of break down what we saw there? Uh, the USDA did release their export sales, or excuse me, export inspections for the week. Uh, we did see wheat come in above expectations at 30 million bushels of exports. Corn came in at 9.5 million bushels, uh, which was right within expectations, and soybeans came in at 40 million bushels, which was at the lower end of expectations. Mm -hmm. Take a look at this chart here. We've been following all marketing year long. The green line is what we need to be seeing for weekly export inspections to meet the current USDA projections of uh, just over 13 million bushels, excuse me, 1.3 billion bushels of soybeans right. leaving the country this year. The red bars are what we are actually seeing for exports leaving the country. So we did meet the seasonal pace to meet that uh, USDA projection, but we did fall uh, just towards the lower end of analyst expectations. But it's a quite a bit different story for corn. Yeah, very different story here, Brock. And if we jump into that chart here, as, as you said, the red bars here are the weekly inspections reported. The green line, the pace needed to meet USDA export uh, expectations. And as you can see here for corn, once again, not able to meet the pace that our model has outlined here for the, those USDA uh, export sales. And in general, just on the week here, we lost 4 million bushels and net, we're now sitting 47 million bushels behind the pace needed to meet that expectation. So not a lot uh, of change there in terms of corn. Uh, soybean sales remain exceptionally strong. Corn really struggling to, to keep, uh, to, to get these sales here, I guess. The big thing though that people are wondering about right now is, is the U.S. going to be able to remain very competitive with a large South American crop uh, coming online here? Certainly in the weeks to come, we'll be looking at export sales closely. Uh, but you know, Brock, in general, I think that's kind of what we saw in the grain market here for today, Tuesday. Uh, certainly, thanks a lot for joining us guys here on Grain TV. Have a great evening. We'll see you tomorrow.